comunidad de Latinoamérica que nos está siguiendo a través de, de, de esta plataforma. Queremos darles la bienvenida y desde luego queremos darles las gracias a todos, a toda esta gran familia que ya conforma 8.8 y en especial a 8.8 Andina, eh, quien hoy en día va a ser el anfitrión entre hoy y mañana. Un gran saludo, querido Grover, desde Bolivia. Te, 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 te mando un gran saludo y desde luego un gran saludo a toda esa comunidad a esa cibercomunidad en realidad de Perú. Eh, buenos días, Robert. Buenos días, buenos días a todos, ¿no? Buenos días a, a toda la comunidad que nos escucha y un fuerte abrazo a nuestros hermanos bolivianos, ¿no? Eh, hoy estamos dando inicio a la segunda edición de 8.8 Andina, que reúne los esfuerzos de integración de Perú y Bolivia, ¿no? Eh, les pido nos ayuden compartiendo los enlaces para sumar a más personas, ¿no? Estamos utilizando el hashtag 8.8 Andina. ¿no? Eh, bueno, en estos dos días nos espera una jornada llena de conocimiento y tendremos temas muy variados que serán de mucho valor para todos ustedes, ¿no? Eh, les explicamos un poco el formato que vamos a seguir en esta conferencia, que son charlas aproximadamente de 40 minutos en el cual van a ustedes después de la finalización poder hacer sus preguntas a través de nuestra plataforma y después van a ver unos pequeños breaks para que podamos levantarnos nuestras sillas y tomarnos un delicioso café. Bueno, eh, dando inicio a la primera charla, este, ya a cargo de Liliana Serín, ¿no? ella es directora de Ostento Consulting, que es una empresa croata especializada en proporcionar seguridad de la información y gestión de riesgos gobernanza de TI, protección de datos personales y servicios de consultoría relacionados con el cumplimiento desde el año 2011. Ella es miembro de la Junta Directiva de ISC Cuadrado, que es un consorcio internacional de certificación de seguridad de sistemas de información. Ella también es vicepresidenta de la Asociación de TI y presidenta de la afiliación de ciberseguridad de la Cámara de Economía de Croacia, ¿no? Eh, Liliana ha sido reconocida entre las 50 principales mujeres influyentes en ciberseguridad en Europa por la revista SC Magazine de Reino Unido del 2018. ¿no? Bueno, eh, sin más preámbulo, este, le dejamos con Liliana eh, con su tema El riesgo de la ciberseguridad a nivel de junta. ¿no? Eh, The cybersecurity risk is a world level issue. Now here is Liliana Serene. Hello everyone. Uh, I hope you can uh, see my screen. Okay, just a moment. So, hello from Croatia. Uh, it's my great uh, honor and pleasure to be a keynote speaker at uh, such a great conference. And hello to all my colleagues in, in the Latin America region. I had a chance to visit Chile and i'm also uh, very impressed by everything i saw there and all the effort you put into making uh, the cyber security community a strong one and i really want to thank uh, mr gabriel berger my colleague from the board of the ic squared the largest organization of the information security professionals for inviting me to give this presentation um, a little bit about myself i could understand grover or the said something uh, however just in a couple of sentences i'm director of standard consulting uh, that is a creation company which was founded in uh, 2011 and we provide the cyber security risk management and uh, it governance and personal data protection related consulting services mainly to companies operating worldwide currently almost all of our clients are in the united states Also, we do uh, business with companies from the United Kingdom, Norway, Europe-wide, and of course, uh, in Croatia, where we are based. I'm also a member of the board of directors of the IC Squared. Uh, that's uh, my really great passion. I'm trying to help our colleagues worldwide you know, ha have a profession that they are going to be recognized by and uh, to serve them with the body of knowledge that we as organization provide and also to make the certifications that we provide most of um, respected one of which is the CISSP worth the effort and continuous professional education as well. 
within Croatia, I'm uh, vice president of the IT Association of the Croatian Chamber of Economy and also president of the Cybersecurity Affiliation, a group of Croatian companies uh, doing business in cybersecurity. And uh, I was also uh, selected as one of the top 50 women of influence in cybersecurity in Europe. That was a great honor to me, provided by the SC Magazine UK. So what I do all my life, I'm trying to put a uh, cybersecurity role and especially, you know, help my colleagues who are in the field get heard and understood at the appropriate level in organizations. I know dealing with cybersecurity is not really an easy job. And we had, we had spent a lot of year, years trying to provide the insights that are basically necessary in order to run the entire business to send this message to the right levels in organization and our you know first first uh, level that we were actually having an ability co co to communicate with was IT chief information officer or so on then it was finally understood we have to be at least uh, in a parallel position with the chief, uh, chief information officers we succeeded in that. I think we succeeded. The next level was actually to have CISOs of chief information security officers seen as senior people within the company, members of the management board, vice presidents of organizations. That is something we also see now. However, I think we need to make one step forward. We never should stop moving and, you know, sending our messages even to more appropriate levels within the organizations. And this is the board of directors. And this is my uh, presentation today. I think that the board, as someone who owns the strategy of the organization, has to have the voice of CISOs heard at the board meetings, heard when ma make, making those decisions about the company, about the strategy, about everything they are going to do about cyber risks and everything those CISOs need in order to do their job properly. Uh, recent research actually shows that we are doing quite well in this area. 67% uh, of the um, respondents indicated that the organization prioritizes cybersecurity above all other business considerations, which means that cybersecurity has become finally the key enabling function across business initiatives. I'm sure you all still have problems when cybersecurity is seen as an obstacle. And this really shouldn't be so. Cybersecurity should always be seen as a business enable instead of an obstacle. So we should be able to say a careful yes, taking into account all the risks our organization is exposed to, instead of saying a primary no, no, you cannot do that. No, this is forbidden. No, our security policy says no, I don't want to talk about this. So this is not the right way. We should be business enablers, but in order to be adequate business enablers, we need to understand those risks that are our uh, information are exposed to. And we also need to make sure the senior level of management, the board of director understands that risk as well. 96% uh, of these same uh, respondents, uh, uh, they agree that business executives now have a better understanding of cybersecurity than they did five years ago. That's a great improvement as well. As part of that better understanding, uh, many business executives uh, do not see when you have a, a data breach within your organization as something that is only CISO's fault or only cybersecurity team's fault. Even more, they now see those people who have been through a breach within a big organization, any kind of organization, that they have actually gained a really worthwhile experience and that experience makes them even better potential employees because they know how to deal with the breach. Also, which is kind of surprising to me, but this is very positive, 76% of respondents believe that managing cyber risk is becoming so important that we will see companies naming CISOs as CEOs. This, in my opinion, it first means CISOs should completely understand all business operations. And that is no longer such, you know, uh, a mistake anymore because they really have to understand all those business processes and everything that is happening within the company in order to make right decisions about how to treat cybersecurity risks. So this is not a far away future. This is happening. 
when we try to answer the question why all of this is happening, uh, this is something I'm not really happy about, but it actually helps. A big word is still compliance. We have, whenever some compliance regulation is made, and especially if it has huge regulatory fines, everyone is alerted. Everyone asks, okay, what do we need to do now in, in, in order to avoid those fines? What do we need to do in order to be compliant? These are great questions to ask, and I understand why companies are asking these questions. And in most cases, we help companies actually align with different compliance requirements. But it will be much better if we have already done everything we could, regardless of what the regulation says, so that we take conscious approach to managing risk within our business. And if the regulation says you have to, I don't know, implement organizational technical measures for personal data protection, fine, we have already done that and we know how to do that and we understand why we need to do that. Uh, however, you, you've seen GDPR in 2018, it came, uh, it became actually uh, something that all companies who process uh, data or subjects, personal data or data subjects in, uh, in the EU, how to be compliant with. And you know the fines coming out of this regulation, 20 million euros, so 4% of the global annual revenue. These are huge numbers. And this is also important driver for, for you know managing cybersecurity risk at the appropriate level. In the last couple of uh, months, we get more and more questions about California Consumer Privacy Act. This is coming statewide. Many other states are also implementing their own laws. So yes, compliance is also driving all of this. I always say they should do that regardless of the compliance. But if compliance helps, okay, let's use that help. Uh, in my entire career, I have, over be, have always been in a position where I see myself mainly operating in a zone between business, legal or compliance officers, and IT people. And trying to make those three people understand each other is actually what I do. Uh, and it's really important that we try and speak the same language. Sometimes this language gets kind of prioritized by certain groups, and then we run into troubles. For example, when you had a GDPR coming into force, it says regulation, a lot of companies have put um, law, law legal experts in force to deal with the GDPR. On the other side, it also says data protection. And what they did, they put IT people in charge of dealing with GDPR. Neither one of those approaches is correct. They need to collaborate. It is all about privacy. Privacy is a little bit uh, more of maybe legal, personal data rights issues, personal rights issues. It is also about technology, about IT, about cybersecurity. You cannot deal with only one side of this story. And this is uh, something what we need also to understand in order to be doing the right thing. One organization that actually helps board members in understanding their roles and what they should do and how they should do their job is a National Association of Corporate Directors. It's based in the United States. And they have brought uh, cyber risk oversight principles. So those five principles actually tell Board, board members, directors, actually, what they need to understand and what approach they should have to cybersecurity. So the first uh, principle says that board needs, needs to understand uh, and approach cybersecurity as enterprise-wide risk management issue, not just an IT issue, something that I already mentioned. We still have that you know, problem that cybersecurity is being put somewhere in IT department and IT is kind of uh, acting as an intermediator between cybersecurity and management and even the board. Board should understand the legal implications of cyber risks as they relate to company specific circ circumstances. So what does it actually mean if we have a data breach? What does it actually mean if we do not comply with, uh, I don't know, if you if operate in financial sector, in financial sector regulations, uh, 
about cybersecurity, what happens in telecommunication sector, what rules we need to follow, and what actually are we going to pay if we don't. They should have access to cybersecurity expertise. This is something that boards often do not have. And uh, one way to deal with that is actually, you know, when, when boards meet, they don't have much time. They usually meet four times a year, and that is like a full day meeting with a lot of different subjects. And usually during this entire day, they find very little time to talk about cybersecurity. They talk about other things, about strategic uh, the, uh, decisions, about uh, reports from different committees of the organizations. They talk with the management about business overall and so on. Cybersecurity must be put on the board's agenda. Uh, they should also make sure that management will establish and, uh, an, an enterprise-wide cyber risk management framework with adequate staffing and budget. We need to know, you know how much money we should dedicate to managing cybersecurity and based on what. I often see organizations uh, having a disconnection between risk assessment and management frameworks for cybersecurity and budgeting plans. Instead of using, when you dis, uh, find out what type of risk you're exposed to and what measures you should implement and how much measures cost, whether it's in time, money, people, resources, software, hardware, use your budgeting plan in time and come to those decision makers with your risk treatment plans, cybersecurity risk treatment plans. This is the right moment. You give them the information on what also they need to, to, to take into account. And also, as you all know, uh, board management discussion about cyber risks should always include those uh, risk treatment options, whether this will be avoided or accepted or mitigated or maybe transferred through insurance. And on, uh, what I consider the most important, once the board makes these decisions, it should have specific plans how it will actually be done. Very often, not only about on boards, but also on various management meetings, we talk about risk, we talk about risk reports, but we never talk about what actual activities we are going to undertake, who is going to be responsible for these activities, by when they should be completed. If we do not know who, what, by when will do, we actually haven't done anything. We are just switching this same conversation to the next meeting. Um, a little bit more on the soft skills side uh, of the problem. So what happens at uh, the boards? In most cases, uh, members of the boards are actually former business executives who have had you know, a strong management career and many different operational functions. And they have a good oversight of business. They know how to bring strategy. They know how to make important decisions and, how, and so on. However, nowadays still, they still haven't experienced you know, those technical concepts, vocabulary about cybersecurity still pretty strange to them a foreign or they don't talk in technical concepts. So this is a little bit of a problem. I wouldn't say this is a big problem, but average age of the board of directors members is 63. Today it doesn't seem as such a big number, but you know, these people maybe haven't been really familiar with the impact of cyber risk. Uh, to organizations' business. They haven't encountered cyber risk during the course of their careers. On the other side, which may be a plus, they also sit on other boards. They can see what's happening in other organizations. And they're often concerned, you know, this organization had a problem, are we to have the same problem? Or, oh, look what happened here. Maybe, you know, maybe we should take some, some care about this. Maybe it should happen to us as well. And then you need to convince them that you have everything under control. But in order to talk to this board, you need to be able to come and express your opinion and give them the information they need. On the other side, when we talk about chief information security officers or security experts, uh, you know, my colleagues, us, <laughs> we usually come from an IT or maybe audit background, background. 
we often do not know exactly what's happening at, uh, at those board meetings and uh, we do not think in the board level terms we are often more tactical more operational than we should be you know strategic and we primarily do our job you know each day-to-day -day activity taking care about managing cyber uh, risks and, and uh, you know, facing cyber threats, staying in compliance in frameworks, staying in compliance with regulatory requirements, often dealing with all different kinds of auditors, spending our time on delivering different reports, uh, acquiring solutions, talking with vendors and so on. In many uh, cases, we do not actually have all the necessary information about the in initiatives going on uh, at the board level or whatever the board is concerned with. And we do not have the direct line of the communication with the board. Often we communicate through the CEO or any other management uh, you know, function that is responsible for cybersecurity. So how to connect those two worlds? How to close the gaps? So the facts are board owns the strategy of the, of the organization, uh, boards provide the risk oversight, and in order to understand the cybersecurity risk, they should uh, also make sure that the cybersecurity risks are timely addressed. And what is the common ground of making this a common language for both sides, for the CISOs and for the boards? Risk reporting is one thing, so this is a good uh, oversight and opportunity for deeper involvement uh, of both sides the, because board members understand how to talk about risk, how to talk about strategy. They do not necessarily understand cybersecurity risk, but more you talk with them, more information you provide about you know, cybersecurity risk and potential impacts and the environment uh, in, in your business processes or technology or systems, but don't go too deeply into technical language, better understanding they will have. And when talking about how to mitigate those risks or talking about concrete plans, you can use the cybersecurity program is something that you will be both able to talk about very constructively because cybersecurity program on one side is operational, who will do what by one, but it's also a strategic program. Board understands strategy, risk, understand uh, uh, CISOs and the board as well, but the cybersecurity program is something they both understand because this involves concrete actions and money. Um, still, we need to make sure they have the information they need, and this information should be concise. And whenever possible, whatever you talk about risks and the impacts, it should be expressed in financial terms. Many organizations uh, switch to the key risk indicators. However, a lot of them get overcomplicated they select too many key risk indicators they monitor and then they get lost in the woods of information they don't actually need or they don't know what to do with you can talk about compliance issues this is something always uh, important still you know it's something that really helps talk about desired risk posture of the organization cyber security investment plans major projects major challenges that you have with those projects. Um, I would say especially a big challenge today and something that we at the IC squared always monitored is actually this cybersecurity skills gap. If you don't have the skilled people, if you cannot employ the right people, if you cannot provide them with the right salary, if you cannot continuously educate those people, they are going to be your weakest link. No matter how much you invest into technology, into software, hardware solutions and so on, if you do not invest enough in people, then you are not going to be able to fight those cybersecurity risks and threat actors and whatever, you know, attack, uh, attack vectors you have to defend against with your organization. <clears throat> However, uh, always that will, you know, do not complicate, keep it simple, always focus around, you know, 10 key metrics, 10 key risk indicators, don't ever compl complicate anything. Uh, one good practice that I see um, 
some boards would ask will ask for the results of independent cybersecurity or cyber risk man management reviews. They will select a company. Besides all those other auditors you have to deal with to review your cybersecurity posture, to review how well you are doing and so on. I don't know if any of you have been uh, following this situation with Didi, a Chinese company that is similar to Uber that we have. They have recently had an IPO. And right after the IPO, the application was taken down from the Apple store because the Chinese government decided that the cybersecurity review of organization did not meet certain criteria and that they do not protect personal data rights. Um, you know, this can sometimes be also a political, political type of fight. So I think it's important here to always verify whatever findings you have. Hire two companies. Do one review. Okay, thank you for the results. Let's see what someone else says. My also advice here is uh, do not only look for the names of the companies. I understand that big companies are always, you know, if they see a big name and document signed by a big name, this doesn't necessarily mean this is a good review. Whenever you are doing a review of your cybersecurity uh, posture, make sure that those actual people doing the review are the right people, people with experience, people who have performed these reviews in other organizations of your type of similar organizations, people that have right credentials. Do not just look for the company name, look for the people who will do that. <clears throat> what the board typically wants to know, so you will find all of, of this in these uh, materials that I put a link into my presentation. So what are the top cybersecurity risks? They would like to see those risks listed in some kind of form. How efficient is our cybersecurity program? Do we need to invest more? Do we have the right skills? Do we need more technologies? One problem with technologies, some CISOs, in order to kind of defend themselves, tend to buy solutions, more solutions, multiple solutions for the same problems. I have even experienced working in, a, in companies that have two different projects dealing with exact same cybersecurity risks because they are coming from different uh, parts of the organizations. Buying a technical solution is not always, you know, the best approach. First, make sure to use whatever you already have in the organization. See with the existing vendors if they can provide additional services. Maybe you are not using all the functionalities of the existing solutions that you have. Maybe you can customize your own processes, use your own development, design software development departments that you have. Buying solutions, especially when, when the vendors say, buy our solution because it will make you compliant with whatever, that's a red flag. You know, no solution will make you comply with, with anything. Only your processes, your practices, and, you know, technical measures at the end, solutions at the end, but not solutions per se. Boards also want to know what uh, are you compliant with the cybersecurity and data protection regulation? And this is always the question. Are we improving or degrading our risk posture? Are we spending too much or too little? So don't be afraid to ask for money when you come to those board meetings because they need to take that into account. And cybersecurity risk, if materialized, can they take the whole company down. So in, if you need money, ask for money. Um, what is the cyber risk associated with some new business initiative? This is also a very, very tricky area. If you are not involved, if you do not know about new business initiatives, if you don't have that mechanism of making sure information security, cyber security, data protection risks are assessed at the beginning of any new business initiative, not somewhere, you know, when everything is already done and bought and implemented, you are going to be one step behind. And this is too late. This is called security by design, privacy by design. I'm sure you are all familiar with that. But you have to have that trigger that informs your cybersecurity team that there is a new 
initiative, new business, new projects, maybe new major, new acquisition, you have to jump into at the beginning before things start to actually get implemented. If you are, I don't know, a company that has to go through public uh, procurement services and so on, there is little you can change if you haven't been involved into this initiative at the beginning. So make sure cybersecurity is always connected with the project management, with uh, uh, new business development, with those people who make these decisions. Also, cybersecurity supply chain, how reliable are our contractors? Do we audit them? How are contracts and service level agreements well positioned? Do we have the right to audit cybersecurity of our supply chain? And do we actually do that? Because sometimes it's written in the agreement and when you come and ask, okay, when was the last time you tested, I don't know, your vendor's ability to recover its system if in case something happens? Well, never. Why? Well, we didn't think it's important. Of course, it's important. Maybe the answer will be, they say they've been tested by someone else and they provided us with the report. Okay, this may be fine, but make sure you have that sentence in your agreement that also allows you to perform this test if necessary, especially for critical cybersecurity providers. Uh, there is also another source of information that I think uh, is very good. It's uh, by the Organization of American States covering, of course, uh, the Latin America. It's called, called Guiding Principles for Presenting to the Board of Cybersecurity. So you will find the material on the link provided here. Just in short, uh, make sure when you come to the board meetings as the CISO or cybersecurity expert, whatever you are going to present, make sure it's relevant to the audience. Is it full board you're talking to, or maybe you're talking to a key committee such as this committee, or maybe audit committee, or whatever committee the board has for this. Um, make sure it's reader friendly. Don't use too much text, uh, focus on graphics and summaries and executive summary, avoid technical jargon. Although today's boards should be more and more familiar with the technical jargon. So, you know, I think with time, this uh, kind of uh, uh, being afraid to talk about uh, technology, this will change. We are all going to talk about technology because it's just our uh, everyday life and we should expect the board members to understand technology. I will never forget when uh, those people in American Senate were questioning uh, Facebook CEO about privacy and data protection practices. And it was obvious they couldn't understand what he was talking about, but this is changing. So those board members will be able to understand what we are talking about. Uh, communicate insights, not just information. So what is happening, how it's changing, how are we managing risk, why we are more exposed in one position, what changed in the risk context and uh, what have we done about that. If this is some kind of a really significant risk, uh, how should we prepare and, you know, just discuss with the board. A board often wants to know about other organizations about uh, industry averages. They always ask for some sort of maturity assessment. You should have that ready as well. And also indicate impact on business operations, costs, market share. If you see, again, IPO of the Didi company in uh, just a few days after, after the IPO, the market share, the stock fell. Uh, why? Because of the privacy concerns and cybersecurity concerns. So you cannot ne neglect this impact as well. Avoid information overload and above all, enable discussion and dialogue. And I've seen situations where you have a CISO presenting to the board and then everyone in the room is quiet. So why is everyone quiet? And you know, the CISO leaves the room uncomfortable. Did I say something wrong or maybe I didn't say what they were expecting me to say and so on. Don't do that. Ask them, you know, is it possible that you don't have any questions? So, you know, make sure they understood everything or just, you know, point to a person and ask that specific person. So what do you think? Would you like to discuss something and so on? So silence is never a good sign. 
make sure you enable discussion and dialogue. Most probably it will come from the board from the board members anyways, in case it doesn't, you initiate that discussion and dialogue. You will feel better afterwards. Um, that's all I had to say. I had uh, 35 minutes for my presentation. I think I was in time. Uh, here are my contact details. I hope uh, you will have questions for me and I will be happy to answer those questions. Feel free to contact me on LinkedIn. I'm very active there and also directly through my company. And I hope I will be visiting uh, Latin America again very soon. Thank you very much. Muchas gracias, Liliana. Tenemos la primera pregunta que llega a cargo de Mauricio Sbonimil. Nos pregunta, ¿cómo calcularía el monto presupuestario necesario para un programa de ciberseguridad? Uh, so the question is, how will you calculate the budget amount necessary for the cybersecurity program in a company? Sí, es correcto. Okay. So, uh, then you have a cybersecurity program. You have come to that. Excuse me. Sh should I answer the question uh, in the chat or, or live? In the chat, in the chat, please. In the chat, okay, no problem. Ah, you answered the question <laughs> live. So, so yeah, it's easy. I mean, yeah. <laughs> okay. So you you bring a cybersecurity program as a result of your uh, cybersecurity risk assessment. Um, I'm sure you understand cybersecurity risk assessment is something that should be done at least uh, regularly. And many companies do it once per year, which is... I think too little. I much, much more believe in continuous uh, cybersecurity risk assessments within companies. Uh, as a result of these risk assessments, you will have something called a risk report and you will establish your risk assessment methodology and you will know and have a management decision about what risk is acceptable, what risk is not acceptable based on this management decision. Whenever is risk not acceptable, you have to decide what to do with that. So you have to mitigate it or you can avoid that risk or you can maybe transfer it to your third party. But you have to do something with that risk. 
sometimes it will be a change in a process. Sometimes it will be a change in uh, technology that we are using. Sometimes it will be implementing new solutions, technical solutions, software solutions, hardware solutions, whatever. Use, uh, whenever possible, I would say use your internal knowledge. If you don't have internal knowledge, find someone who can provide you with the number, I don't know, let's say two, three different solutions that you could incorporate into your environment. Someone who is familiar with your environment and can tell you about each solution, how much it will cost, what will, what are the pluses or minuses of a certain solution. Find out for your company how much this solution costs and talk to the vendor and see, of course, you know, is this some price that we will hold the line or it can extend to, I don't know, they usually give you a smaller price at the beginning and then they tend to complicate it further with, you know, more expenses and so on. So whatever type of risk treatment actions you have to take, buying the solutions, investing into people, changing processes, try to estimate how much this will cost and adjust your program to those estimations and present the program as such together with the numbers to the management. So whether it's internal work, find out how many people will have to work on mitigating a certain risk. If it's buying a solution, you know, pick through two or three of them and make sure you understand uh, benefits or, or disadvantages of each one of them and how much it will cost for your company. And a lot of cases, when talking about those solutions, because they are the most expensive, you can maybe start with a pilot. A lot of vendors would actually offer you to run a pilot together with them, and then you can choose to buy the solution and so on. Collect these expenses for all the risk treatment activities that you have to perform, and this will be the budget amount necessary for the cybersecurity program in your company for a certain period of time until the next risk assessment, until some changes. When you read the uh, cybersecurity framework, it always says risk assessment should be performed at least you know, annually or biannually or something like that. In ideal case, it should be performed uh, continuously, but it should be always performed when something changes within the organization. I think there is um, another question. Thank you. Uh, Definitely. Definitivamente, okay. el riesgo de la ciberseguridad es un problema que debe tratarse a nivel de junta. Exactly. And the board should be very, very well aware on how much we are spending on cybersecurity, what are the risks, and cybersecurity should be able to send this direct and clear message to the board. It doesn't mean it's saying anything, you know, against CEO or it's not cooperating with the CEO. It just has to be understood as a message at the highest possible level. And CEO should be also the enabler of this message. Thank you, Viliane. Thank you. You're welcome. Definitivamente, el riesgo de la ciberseguridad es un problema que debe tratarse a nivel de junta, ¿no? Y los altos ejecutivos deben tener conocimiento de los diversos enfoques para la gestión exitosa de la ciberseguridad. Ha sido este, muy interesante tu participación. Ha sido de gran aporte que nos facilites un enfoque muy claro y muy oportuno para estos tiempos que estamos viviendo. Yeah. Muchas Thank gracias, Elena. Esperamos Mucho gracias. contigo en próximas ediciones. <laughs> Muchas gracias. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me and have a great rest of the conference. <laughs>